Because of the coronavirus pandemic, we're not allowed to go outside in Los Angeles at the moment, uh, you know, except for taking care of essential business. Um, but I was wondering if I could still maybe do some exploring, you know, in, in, in regards to Hollywood history. So I had the idea to just see, you know, the, the, all the history that's on my way as I'm walking to the grocery store to, to, to get some water and stuff. And, and, and this is the video that came out of that. <laughs> Um, the area I'm exploring is Franklin Village. Franklin Village is a small little strip um, between Hollywood, Los Feliz, and Beechwood Canyon, where I currently live. Um, so I hope you like this video, and it's also kind of informative. <laughs> okay, so right down the street from where I live, we have the Hollywood Tower. Built in 1929 in a French Normandy style, the building was originally called Le Belle Tour, the beautiful tower, and it had a little over 50 apartments and they were rented out mostly to, to people in the film industry. Uh, a lot of actors or crew members um, from Warner Brothers stayed or lived here um, because the studio was close by. Some of the people who lived here were George Raft, who, who also had an interest in the building, which makes me think that probably the mob had a hand in this too because uh, George Raft had, had ties to the mob, <laughs> but that's just speculation on my part. <laughs> uh, Eugene Pallette, the, the great character actor, um, uh, lived here f all throughout the 30s. Uh, other people who lived here were Humphrey Bogart, Errol Flynn, William Powell, Colin Clive, and Carmen Miranda. She, she actually married here in the lobby. The other side of this building is probably more recognizable um, because it's such a it's such an iconic view when you <laughs> when you drive on the Hollywood Freeway and you and you pass by the Hollywood Tower. I didn't shoot this footage myself, by the way. I can't fly yet. Uh, I snatched this from the website of the Hollywood Tower. Today the building is still used as an apartment building, although I think the inside is probably a little less fancy than the outside. I haven't been inside myself, but from what I know, uh, and so the rents are pretty affordable, especially for Los Angeles, um, so if you want to live here. <laughs> but I gotta warn you, it's also considered one of the most haunted places in Hollywood. Residents over the years have reported ghost sightings and spirit activity. Just a little further down the road, we have the Scientology Celebrity Center, aka the Maynard Hotel, aka the Chateau Elysee. That's what it was called when it was built in 1927 as a luxury apartment building for movie stars. Amongst its famous residents were Betty Davis, Errol Flynn, Edward G. Robinson, Carol Lombard, Clark Gable, Humphrey Bogart, Ginger Rogers, Gracie Allen and George Burns, Lillian Gish, Catherine Hepburn, Cary Grant, and last but not least, George Gershwin. Um, the property included a bubbling stream, a tennis court, and a pair of rubber trees that are now more than 100 years old. The place was run like a hotel with daily maid service and meals served in a formal dining room and they threw glamorous wild parties and anybody who was anyone in Hollywood at the time came through these doors. But all good things must end and in the late 60s the Church of Scientology started using the building and since 1973 it has been owned by the church and they use it as a hotel for artists and athletes and basically VIPs within their church and also have offices there. 
This building has a really rich, fascinating, and even dark history that is way too extensive to explore in a short video. But just briefly, uh, it was built in 1927 by Eleanor Inns, who was the widow of Thomas Inns, who was a pioneer filmmaker during the early, early silent days. He is known as the father of the Western. He produced over 800 films, and he revolutionized the motion picture industry by creating the first major Hollywood studio. Now, Thomas Inns died under very mysterious circumstances in 1924 during a party on the yacht of newspaper tycoon William Randolph Hearst. The cause of death was officially ruled as heart failure, but there were persistent rumors that he was actually shot by Hearst. Accidentally shot, I should add, because the bullet was actually intended for none other than Charlie Chaplin who was also on the yacht that night. Hearst suspected that his long-term mistress, the great comedienne Marion Davies, was having an affair with Chaplin, so he wanted to shoot Chaplin, but somehow he missed, and he ended up killing Thomas Inns. So in order to shut his widow up or out of guilt, he supposedly offered to help finance the construction of the Chateau Elysee as well as the building across the street, the Villa Carlotta. So the Villa Carlotta was actually built one year prior to the Chateau Elysee in 1926, and Eleanor Inns hired the same architect for both buildings, a fellow named Arthur Harvey. Although the style is very different, this building is Spanish colonial style. Among its notable residents were Marion Davies, producer David Oselznik, director George Cukor, Montgomery Clift, and Hollywood gossip columnist Luella Parsons lived in a duplex in the courtyard, and that's actually where she wrote her columns from. After Hollywood's golden age, it attracted a bohemian clientele of artists and musicians, and in the 1960s, Jim Morrison lived here. Now, over the decades, as Hollywood became a little seedy and run down and neglected, so was the building neglected, and it was pretty cheap to live here for a while. Then it changed owners, and in 2018, so pretty recently, it reopened after extensive renovations that took two years and cost over $5 million. It was a labor of love. Much of the original interior was preserved, there are like hand-painted moldings and all of that stuff is still there. And today it still attracts a free-spirited clientele consisting of artists and creatives, but you got to be a pretty wealthy free spirit, <laughs> I think, to live here. And this is why I get such a kick out of living in Los Angeles as a classic film lover and film history buff because just on this little walk from my home to the grocery store that takes me like five minutes, I have so much history and it just, it just blows my mind. And because I'm not from here, because I am an outsider, I think I just never take that for granted and I'm so grateful for it and I will... I will just always be thrilled by that, you know, to have that energy around of these people and those glamorous times. And I think a lot of people who live here just just don't know, you know, are not really aware that, that they have all this rich history here. So I hope this video kind of helped <laughs> in making people more aware of the amazing history of this wonderful city.